Cover your mouth when you're young, because that's how the devil gets in. I'm here to pay the bills so my family can serve God. Straight A's, five out of five for effort. Where did we go wrong? Everyone Else Burns is a show about a Mancunian family in a small religious sect that believes that Armageddon is imminent. Pack your things, Aaron. The end time is here. Finally. We knew that we wanted to make a show that was based around a family. Uh, we knew that we wanted a sense of place to it. We knew we wanted it to be a comedy as opposed to a comedy drama. Which wedding photo, Fiona? Portrait or kiss? Kiss is more lively and vital, but... Can you help me say Gideon, David? We should prioritise living things. We started talking about aspects of kind of my upbringing that um, we, you know, spark things for both of us. It was a really great lens for us to be able to kind of look at these hopefully relatable moments, these kind of coming of age moments, in like a new way. Hug the rim, Rachel. My locks need their edges to be straight. Can you not just go to a hairdresser? And miss the consistency of the bowl? No. This is your duty. Fiona did my scissor work for years before you came of age. I won't go back, Rachel. One of the feelings that I remember tapping into and that we talked about was just that feeling of like being a young kid, you know, 10 years old, and feeling kind of terrified of what it might be like um, if the world's going to end tomorrow and worrying about that, worrying what's going to happen to me, what's going to happen to my family. Rachel, God's not going to answer your prayers right now. He's busy lighting up heathens. I'm asking him for salvation. I remember seeing, you know, different points of view around that, that whole kind of thing in that, you know, people who are sort of looking forward to the end of days, people who are kind of terrified to it, the full spectrum, and that's something that we wanted to capture. I think one of the unexpected takes that we found ourselves exploring as this show became kind of warmer and more heartfelt and more family-based was the really tight-knit sense of community small groups like this has. The irony being that the more uh, niche and the more, I guess you can say, isolated and closed off your opinions, the tighter you're going to be drawn to the other people in your community, and I hope people will get that impression as they watch. This is a, a true uh, communal social group that maybe we don't have as often in the wider modern world. I was worried that you guys were too intense, but I feel better now. The whole religious side of it is something that structures their lives, but it's also a kind of background to what they do. It's really about this family and the life that they go through and the way they interact with the modern world and the way they interact with each other. The gags are always coming from the characters first. We're not aiming to draw gags where someone's the butt of the joke. But even David, beneath all of his layers of obnoxiousness, there is a heart of gold there somewhere. It just takes five or six episodes to get to. No, I'm concerned that you're unhappy and that I haven't been there for you. I want to rectify that. So, here's the plan we go away to an isolated trailer. That's it. That's it, Aaron. The stairway to heaven is real. And her name is the M64. We met as students. Uh, we'd started doing student comedy together. The first time that we met, um, Ollie, quite rightly, uh, rejected a sketch of mine from a show that uh, I was trying to get into. And I remember his email, which included the line, be honest with yourself about what's actually going to get a laugh. I still read that email pretty much every day. You know, it's kind of tattooed on my brain when I'm writing. And eventually, I just kind of plucked up the courage to ask him if he wanted to work together on something. And we started doing live shows together. And but we always knew that we wanted to write for TV. Yeah, really. absolutely. You know, and we, we always wanted to write more than perform. That was, we performed as a, mean, as a means to, to write, really. I remember after my very first hospital night shift, I took the train up to Edinburgh and we did like three shows that week. So pleased we started making our dates bi-weekly. They're so blissful, I just lose track of time. We're finishing 15 minutes. Our producer, Molly at, at Jax, who's amazing, uh, sort of describes it as like a, a textbook TV development process in some ways in that, you know, it was about three years from first draft to getting, you know, getting into the actual shoot, which feels like a long time, but actually in, in the context of TV, it's, it's pretty amazing that it went that quickly. We knew, um, even when we were writing the spec script, that we wanted um, to pitch the show to Jax um, because we loved the stuff that they'd been doing. And then we knew once they came aboard, that we'd, it was always kind of the absolute dream for the show to have its home on Channel 4. 
Um, and there's lots and lots of twists and turns and sleepless nights. There's lots of rewrites and at every stage it feels like there's more variables to wrangle and think about, you know, whether it's locations or cast availability or, you know, a certain bit of feedback that you haven't quite hit or the brief for the show changing, all of this. So we were kind of really like rolling with it. Um, but, you know, by the time, by the time we went into sh shooting, it just meant that we knew the characters really well and we felt more comfortable making changes on the fly. And having such a great cast is obviously a huge help yeah. to that. And every line had had about 10 alts by the time we took it to the screen. Every version of each arc of each character in each episode had a few different twists and turns so that if there were specific demands on the day or if a room we were shooting was just too small to have all the characters we wanted in it, we could make those changes on the fly. And we could look impressive on set because it looked like we were improvising it, but we absolutely weren't. <laughs> it, was all, it, was, it was just the, rem the remains of previous scripts yeah, that we'd we collected back bank. up from the floor, absolutely. Aaron, didn't we say you'd stop drawing people being perched? We said no family. These were the kids. No one's route to writing is the same in my experience. I was doing all kinds of different odd jobs in the industry and then eventually I'd done enough of those that I became an assistant on an HBO show and then eventually I was on that for two years or so and one of the writers you know, read one of my scripts and so on and so forth. So it's not like um, there's only one way to do it. I've given you real, actual, real line, Fiona. Please don't be mad. I genuinely can't articulate how amazing it was to come in and see the house, you know, say from the script, like brought to life and to see people kind of doing like new things and, you know, delivering our lines and making these characters real in like ways we could never really have thought of. I got to arrive early before kind of most people had showed up and just got to wander around this space which our incredible design team had filled with all these little kind of details about our yeah. world and built on thing, individual lines we'd thrown away in the script and just being able to wander through that kind of paradise of different elements of, of this story come to life. Every detail just kind of, you know, it was, was amazing to see. Mary's visions of Gabriel didn't look this good. I was see seeing Harry Connor, who plays Aaron, uh, grow in confidence until he was basically running the set. You're a really weird kid, Aaron. I like you though. Thank you, Melissa. I'm still forming my opinion of you. What a guy, like, I, you know, I felt like by the end of it, I wanted to ask him advice on what I was doing. You know, he was just that confident and that in control of things. So, yeah, but all the cast are just out of this world. You guys ever just have fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Would you like to talk to me about God? God, 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 God. We believe millions will perish unless we personally save them. He's so needy about it. My son idolises me. David, he's drawing you in an acid bath. Uh-oh. I provide for my family. 